Hi everyone and welcome to today's General Hospital Recap. As always, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of our videos or recaps. Pretty good episode today, so let's get right to it. Woo. <laughs> Sorry, after the live episodes, I've just been kind of like, you know, we're adjusting back to the norm. So at Sabrina's house, uh, she's watching the news to see if Carlos' arrest uh, shows up on the news. And apparently, it's, it's not on the news, but apparently a lion has escaped from the Port Charles Zoo. So we're learning more and more about Port Charles and its events and attractions, so I'm excited to visit there one day. Um, Michael comes by to pick up Sabrina for their dinner date, which she has forgotten about because she has quite, she has had quite a long day. And they talk about Carlos, and Michael decides that uh, they're going to order in and have their dinner date there, so that way they can keep updated to see if there's any news on Carlos, and which is a really cool thing to do. Really like Michael. He does no wrong in my eyes. You know that. We all know that. Um, at Pier 54, Sloane and Anna are uh, getting down and dirty, cleaning up the pier, like literally like washing the blood off and, you know, disposing of the body and all that. And after they're kind of done, Liz walks up onto the pier and she tells Sloane and Anna that Sean shot at Jake and someone else took the bullet. And Anna, after she leaves, Anna thanks Sloane for helping her. What are you doing, kitty cat? What are you doing? Uh, thanks her for helping, thanks him for helping her with this Carlos mess. See, Misha, she just upsets the flow of everything. Uh, Kiki, so we haven't seen Kiki in quite a few days. And Morgan comes to visit her and he, he's like, I feel like you don't want to talk to me. I feel like you're mad at me. And I'm like, hmm, Morgan, why wouldn't Kiki want to talk to you? What possible reason could she have? Hmm. And Morgan, uh, Asks a, oh, so Morgan asks her a question, like what she had on her mind. She answers like with her new cousin, uh, Olivia's baby. And then before she gets a chance to explain the relationship or the stuff that's gone down, Morgan just starts berating her. He's like, but you're not a quarter main, remember? Kiki's not a Q. And, blah, 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 blah. and I'm like, dude, let her talk. Like, he's so self-centered and arrogant. I really can't stand him anymore. And, like, everything's about him. He has to make everything about him. He's so self-centered. Like, he doesn't even want to listen to anything she has to say. He just wants to make sure, like, they're good and stuff. And she says she's mad at him because my girl has Avery again. And Morgan Sirius is like, what did I do? How did I do that? And I'm like, I'm like, are you serious right now? So she tells him that Sonny dropped the custody suit so Michael would drop the charges against them, which means... Um, Michael, like, is never going to get challenged for custody again by Sonny. So that's, that's all Morgan's fault. And Morgan, again, basically blaming Kiki for trusting him or blaming Kiki for going along with his plan, which I, I know ultimately she went along with it. But she did have objections, like, right in the beginning. So this whole thing is like, oh, you just willingly went along with me. About and like, no, she did voice her concern about it. And, like, he's really so immature. And then he's just yelling at her about Michael. And the, she still has feelings for Michael. And then they end up kissing. So I really just don't understand. Olivia and Dante. So Olivia tells Dante that the baby has died. And I'm like, oh, my God, that must be, like, so difficult for her. But Dante is so supportive and perfect and caring and too compassionate so Olivia just winds up telling him the truth about the baby and that the baby is at a private hospital with Ned outside of Port Charles and Dante is worried that she was pressured to do this and she insists that she wasn't and it's just the best way to keep the baby safe from Julian so Dante supports her decision. Speaking of Julian, Alexis visits Julian's place to pick up the rest of her stuff and Julian shows up and uh, they they talk and Julian tells Alexis that the baby died and Alexis thinks it's some ploy by Ned and Olivia but he tells her about the accidental cremation and then Alexis is like we'll do the hospital and Julian's like why there's no point like there's no point in doing that. So Alexis says she should go and Julian doesn't want her to go so are they going to wind up getting back together is she still not going to be with him? Who knows? Uh, Jake, so this is where the episode got really exciting for those of us who just cannot wait for the Jake reveal. Is anyone out there, like, riding this out and they're like, well, I don't really care when they reveal that Jake is Jason. Like, is anyone, like, just kind of cool with it or is everyone just, like, on the edge of their seat with every episode, like, oh my god. 
I don't know where that cut out because I have five percent battery, so I got I gotta finish this up fast. But is anyone else like, oh my god, when are they gonna tell us? Because I I'm like on the edge of my seat every episode. But is anyone just like riding this out like normal? So Jake blames himself for Hayden being shot, and I'm thinking Jake should like get hypnotized or go under, like not go under full anesthesia, but maybe if they just do a little bit of the drug that relaxed him and allowed him to remember, then that would like relax him and allow him to remember again, except without you know, that he could actually recall it consciously. So, uh, Jake, he's like, well, I don't remember my past, but, like, he does remember his past. He just thinks they're weird dreams, and, like, he doesn't realize they're memories. Is with Sam and everything, and it's just, oh, so disheartening. And Sam and Jason talk about Sam's past and how Jason played into that, and they have some real bonding time, so it was, like, really exciting and perfect because I think it'll really bring back a flood of memories in, like, the next few episodes to come. And then they bring up the dress. Uh, I don't even have to explain it any further, but it was blue and black, so I, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> so then uh, she... Oh, she asked him why he won't allow himself to be publicly exonerated if he really didn't kill Duke. And then Patrick walks up to them, and he, like, has this look on his face. And he tells them that, hey, oh, and at this point now Elizabeth is back, that Hayden is alive, but she's in a coma. And I'm just like, we got so close. And Olivia's just, I mean, Elizabeth is just standing there looking so guilty. Like, could she have a guiltier face on? Seriously. So, once again, we didn't get the Jake reveal, but, like, I feel like they're so close. Like, how, like, they've gone this far with it. How much longer can they drag it out? Like, seriously. Seriously. And the promo looks good for people who don't want, um, Elizabeth and Jake to be together. So, can't wait for that. <sighs> and, oh, yeah, because now Hayden got shot, he's gonna think it's too dangerous, so he's really gonna cut Elizabeth out. Yes! Okay. I feel better now. Um, I will see if you liked it, if you liked today's episode, please uh, give us a thumbs up, and I will see you tomorrow for more Gemma Hospital. I hope you have a great day. Bye.